Homer doesn't understand why I'm up, and I don't understand why I'm up, okay? The fact is, I'm going to read this to you, and what you'll have to realize is that saying, oh, you shouldn't have said that, or whatnot, won't matter to me, because I will not be reading your comments on this, okay? I will be sleeping all day and then taking off to go to the courthouse. We're trying to sleep. Um, all that I can say is, what the hell am I supposed to say? Can I ever get any of these judges or anyone to understand what happened when I don't understand it myself? Of course not. Auntie told me, you know, you're right, let's just, you just write the facts. Just write this and that that happened. That's what she does. I've read things that she wrote. She doesn't elaborate. It's just... Point by point by point by point, it at least lets them know that, you know, I have a lot of problems, and, and my cousin was, in a huge respect, pulling the strings, you know? I thought I was doing what my mom wanted, and, and in any case... In the end, I don't know if it's up or down, black or white, but I had to write, so I'm just going to write my life. But a very, very condensed summary, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to run out of batteries or run out of whatever, okay? And yes, that's Mr. Lou snoring in the background, not understanding why I'm up any more than I'm understanding why I'm up. I felt compelled to talk about that that thing going on with the BTK serial killer and the daughter of the BTK serial killer. Went up. Again, it's all an excuse because I felt compelled to do all kinds of shit all day long yesterday instead of what I needed to do, which was this. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I don't know. Um, Alright, anyway. My name is Laura, and then the rest of my name. I am 46 years old. I am, insert name of my mom's, daughter, only child, and sole heir. My mother was diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic when I was 10 years old. My father left my mother and me when I was 2 years old. My mother met an abusive alcoholic when I was 4 years old and married her when I was 9 years old. Oh, I need to add, he remained in our lives until I was 12 years old. He remained a part of our lives until I was 12 years old. Okay? Depends. Um, when I was 13, my mother became too sick to any longer take care of me. So I had to move in with my psychologically abusive, alcoholic, pot-smoking father and his girlfriend. Right when I was about to start high school. Despite my traumatic, dysfunctional upbringing, I managed to make it to college. In X year, I graduated cum laude from X university. I have a bachelor's BA in English and have been writing songs, poems, and essay type stuff since I was in grade school. After college, I moved back to Massachusetts and moved in with my mom and her third husband, insert his name, who was, as is the case with my mom, who, who as was the case with my mom, had loads of psychological problems. Despite her often debilitating mental illness, my mom managed to work full-time at the same company for 22 years. My mother loved working and rarely called in sick. According to her, she's like, I don't think she ever called in sick, you know. Her memory can be a little faulty, but I do remember a long time ago. I, I knew I, she just she never called in sick, and she loved working. She it gave her a sense of purpose in life. But anyway, um, in 
in 2001, I moved to Los Angeles to be with a man I'd met online and believed was my long-awaited by me soulmate. I also had fantasies of becoming a star. My soulmate turned out to be an Can't remember writing. My soulmate turned out to be in a oh psychologically. That's probably what I wanted to write, I think. Oh. My soulmate in quotations turned out to be a psychologically abusive alcoholic who in a single act of rage near nearly caused my death or worse in 2008. I'd been well trained by this man for years. I didn't call the cops on him. I didn't want to, quote, ruin his life, unquote. Four months later, in March of 2009, my recently retired mother had a breakdown for the first time in over 10 years. Prior to Donald doing the unthinkable to me on 11-408, I had suffered a serious bulging disc injury that had left me completely out of commission for five agonizing months. I ultimately remained in the home I'd shared with Donald and his mother for years. I had nowhere to go and I loved my pug dog Omar. In 2012, Donald choked me while his mom watched and said nothing. This time I called the cops. but only in secret when Donald was not home. The next day I grabbed my dog and ran for my life. Omar and I spent seven days living on the street or in cheap hotels until I found a found separate shelter for both of us. I stayed first in a domestic violence shelter and then in transitional housing that catered to victims of domestic violence. I didn't think I would ever see Omar again. A judge granted me first a one month and later a one year restraining order against Donald. This was a victory for me, but I missed my dog. Terrible. offered to fly me and Omar to Massachusetts to stay with her and try to heal. There was nothing left for me in L.A., and I grabbed at the opportunity to have my dog back. I didn't know that circumstances would prevent me from being able to stay with my mom, and I would ultimately wind up spending six and a half months in a homeless shelter. I took comfort in the fact that Omar was safe and I was free of Donald and his mom forever. I applied for, and with the help of my shelter caseworker and various therapists, I 
eventually got a proof of Social Security disability. Social Security de decided or declared or whatever. Social Security declared that I had been come disabled in March of 2009, but Social Security can only go back one year from when I applied. I received a substantial amount of retroactive pay and was awarded a monthly income of $1,000 per month. At this time, I hadn't worked at all since January of 2008. But prior to January 2008, I pretty much worked either full-time or part-time my entire adult and, and my entire adult and part of my teenage life, except when I was in school. The entire time I've been living in L.A. with my abusive boyfriend and his mother, my Aunt Marion have been helping my mother achieve financial independence. Marion helped my mother fight and win against exes with my mom's, or the name of my mom's third husband, corrupt conservator. After my mom's husband passed away under suspicious circumstances in a nursing home, my mother was eventually able to sell the home he, she and him had shared and purchase this place she lives in to this day. All the way back in 2007 or 2008 was when Marion convinced my mom to initiate a wrongful death lawsuit against the nursing home where X had died. The lawsuit dragged on and on year after year. Marion and my mom had each put in a thousand dollars for a lawyer and had agreed to split fifty fifty any settlement money that that may eventually come into their hands. Of course there was no guarantee that anything would come. I mean it was dragged on and on for years and years and years. And I was fully aware of it and I was fine with the fact that they'd agreed to split it, you know. Um when the case was finally settled out of court around January of 2013, um, the statute of limitations had nearly run out. Whoops. Bye bye, Bavaria. What up? splitting the money, um... Towards the end of my stay at the shelter, my 2008 bulging disc injury returned with a vengeance. I now had my own income and a nice, um, sum of money in the bank. I was in constant physical pain. So then, like I said, sort of shortly after I had received a small windfall of my own, you know, the retroactive pay, I moved in with my mom. A few months later, she got a note from her doctor that allowed me to live here with her and help her out. I cleaned. I cooked healthy meals. I helped my mom drop 30 pounds. I rented good movies for my mom and I to watch. I bought all the food and toiletries for the household. I paid towards electricity and paid my own internet bill. All in all, I paid my mom 
the equivalent of about $400 rent each month. She and I fought sometimes, but also had a lot of really good times together. how to go about this, what to say, anything, right? My mom's beloved sister was slowly dying of pancreatic cancer. My mom was in denial. I provided my mom with comfort and companionship. Right before my aunt died, my mom became overwhelmed with grief and wound up breaking down. She stayed at X hospital for two weeks. Then she came home and began gushing to me about this man she had met in there. At this time, she confessed to me that she and Marion had actually received X amount of dollars each from the wrongful death settlement. My mom had told this stranger, whom I later found out was at least 30 years her junior, all about the loss of money. My mom was contemplating fighting Marion's long-time um, control of my mom. My mom wanted me to talk to her new beau. I did as my mom requested. But... As you guys know, because I said it out here about 50 times, 50 different videos, but feared he might be after her money. I didn't want to make my mother mad, so I kept my suspicions to myself and cooperated with my mom's new boyfriend in quotations. My aunt passed away summer of 2013. My mother took it hard. 
I visited my out-of-state friend from August 2013 to December of 2013. My mom had a really bad breakdown in February of 2014 and wound up committed into X hospital for two and a half months. Omer and I moved in with a guy who had responded to my Craigslist room as dad. I paid the guy up front $1,500, two months rent, and a $300 security deposit. The guy and his landlord eventually screwed me and Omar over. I suffered more trauma. I wound up back at the shelter, and Omar was able to go back and live with my recently released from the hospital mother. Before I knew it, I was all caught up in stuff that I feared my mother wouldn't be able to handle. My fears came true and my mom wound up sectioned on 10 7, 14 then committed into X hospital for over two months. Two days after entering this facility on 10 8, 14, my mother suffered a seizure for the first time ever in her life, and I later found out at her commitment hearing that her seizure had been a grand mal. Everything that has happened in my life and in my mom's life over the past nearly two years I mean, I said the past nearly seven years has taken its toll on me. I admittedly have a lot of problems. My cousin returned home to her immediate family two weeks after she made my life, but she This was after I read my when we came back. I Bobby and his landlord fucked me over. Okay. After that I I'm honestly not sure what happened. I was once again living at the shelter and only visiting my mom and Omar on the weekends. My mom got it into her head that she wanted to fly my cousin here. I felt like my mom was getting sick again. I thought it had been foolish for my mom to give my cousin um, the credit card number and security code of the joint credit card my mom had with her sister. I, I wasn't happy being back at the shelter. I went along with my mom's eventual plans to get a lawyer and fight her sister. My cousin came to Massachusetts to stay with my mom for two weeks. I hadn't seen my cousin in over 20 years. My cousin took charge of everything and encouraged my mom to fight my cousin. Before I knew it, I was all caught up in stuff that I feared my mom would not be able to handle. And I was right, wasn't I? I did fear that, you know. I just wouldn't listen to it. My mom was in hospital. I, she's her own person. She's able to make her own decisions. It's not like, you know. My fears came true. My mom wound up sectioned on 10 7, 14, then committed to X hospital um, for over two months. Two days after entering this facility on 10 8, 14, my mother suffered a seizure for the first time ever in her life, and I later found out at her commitment hearing that her seizure had been a grand mal. So I had no idea what a grandma was until I looked it up. Found out it was the most, most severe seizure imaginable you could have. Most severe form. Everything that has happened in my life and in my mom's life over the past nearly seven years has taken its toll on me. I admittedly have a lot of problems. My cousin returned home to her immediate family two weeks after re-entering my life. But she continued to pull the strings from 3,000 miles away. Oh, 
she most definitely continued to pull the strings from 2,000 miles away. She was who first called the elder abuse fucks and got them involved in my mother's affairs. She was who... kept pushing me to uphold what my mom had... wanted when my mom was not hospitalized. But in the end, I had no idea what my mom really wanted. My mom had clearly been conflicted all along regarding the lawsuit she had brought against her sister. And in the end, it was all too much for my mom and she broke down yet again. While my mom was committed into ex-hospital, the, the other one while I was living with Bobby, um, one of my mother's other sisters died. And my Aunt Marion then became my mom's only living sister. My cousin didn't care about any of this, but I did. Um, and I realized how conflicted my mom was in regards to all of this. In light of all that our family has suffered through over the past nearly two years, I truly feel that we should be, including the death of a family member truly beloved to us all, I truly feel that we should be given the benefit of the doubt and not be forced to have strangers become involved in something that there's no reason one of our own family members can't handle. I acknowledge and accept that due to my own um, mental problems, I can't be given control of my mom's finances. But as my mother's daughter, only child, and sole heir, I'm humbly requesting that the courts grant that type of power to somebody suitable in my mom's family. Even if it can't be my aunt who prior to all of this mess that unfortunately entered our lives had been performing these types of tasks from my mom quite nicely. Like, can the courts please allow somebody... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh, even if it can't be my aunt... Oh, can it please allow somebody else in our family to take over my aunt's long-time role um, of... Role of taking care of my mom's finances and protecting my easily manipulated, um, something like far too trusting mentally ill mother. Um, from being taken advantage of by unscrupulous people lurking everywhere. All members of my family agree that my, oh, I'm sorry, easily manipulate, easily, something, easily manipulated, far too trusting mentally a mother um, should not be allowed to handle um, large sums of money on her own. We all simply ask that it not be a stranger who has granted this type of tremendous power over my mom's life and finances. The question is how many typed pages will that be?
Tuna. All I know is it doesn't even begin to, you know, it doesn't even begin to touch the surface of what really happened, what really happened with me and my mom and my cousin and, you know, And in the end, the, nobody can force the judge to read anything. These judges don't have to read anything. They're supposed to. Like Gandhi said, if they get it, they have to read it. Well, not really. They can pretend to read it. They can skim it, you know. They can do whatever. It doesn't begin to even, you know, it only skims the surface of everything. I'm exhausted. I'm grateful that Omar poo pooed outside. I do plan to, you know, try to train him. I do. This thing I have to get done. I also, I have to get back into therapy. Still haven't applied for Section 8. And I'm not making excuses, you know? It is what it is. Everybody does what they do. You know what I mean? Everybody does what they do. Recently, this young teenager, not young, young teenager, but whatever, she left a party from down the street, and these people, total strangers to her, found her passed out in the freezing cold in their yard. Apparently, she's, like, in critical condition or something. I don't know. I'm just making a point. People do what they're going to do. She knows it's the middle of winter. She knows it's freezing. She left this party and passed out.